There's a new grinder coming out very soon called Femobook A68. In spite of its strange name, I believe this is uh, one of the most interesting and unique grinders uh, that has been released for a while. It's rare to see a completely unique design in the world of grinders, but uh, I believe this uh, has it. It's a 68mm conical bow grinder and it looks a little bit like if the Easypresso K-Max and the Laga Mini had a child. The company is uh, based in Taiwan and uh, some of the employees also have a past in Easypresso, so that also kind of elevates the expectations. Today we'll take a close look at it, why is it so special, what's uh, cool about it and we'll also do some uh, tests and of course I will also give you my opinion and uh, tell you whether this is the right grinder for you. So first of all I should say that uh, even though this grinder looks like an uh, Easy Peso product, uh, the rep who contacted me about it was very clear that uh, this is a different company. The grinder is not available yet. It will be launched at the big coffee show in Taipei in late November, which is the same show where I first encountered Easy Peso in 2017. So again, there's some overlap. I had a good feeling about Easy Peso back then, and I also have a pretty good feeling about the Femobook brand. Of course, there's another thing that we will also have to talk about, and that is the name of the grinder. I mean, Femobook, for me, it sounds a little bit like a laptop, maybe a cheap copy of the MacBook. And then uh, FEMO, I'm not sure what it means. I tried to look it up and according to Urban Dictionary, it's a fake emo. So I'm not sure what a fake emo and a book has to do with uh, grinding coffee. But uh, for some reason, this is the name of the brand. So the name and the branding is uh, actually a little bit unfortunate because I think overall, uh, if you look uh, besides that, it's a pretty unique and uh, cool looking design. I mean, you haven't really seen anything like this before and it's kind of like minimalist and uh, functionalistic at the same time. The model I have here in front of me is in uh, a color they call champagne gold, uh, which is actually really nice. Uh, I would probably prefer it to be silver just because uh, that's what most people have in their espresso bar, uh, a steel machine. So uh, maybe the champagne color isn't the best combination with the chrome espresso machine. But uh, yeah, I believe it's also going to be available in uh, silver and black. So you also have those options. The logo on the grinder is a little bit too big for my taste. It's probably not going to be that noticeable in daily use because most people will have the grinder facing this way with the cord coming out of the back. So you'll just have it here on the side. But uh, yeah, if you ask me, it's uh, just way too big. I would probably prefer it to be a lot smaller and then hidden away somewhere on the back. I actually talked to the company about this and they said for a new company, it's uh, good to have a big brand. So yeah, I would also be curious to hear what you think. Uh, so leave a comment down below if you prefer minimalist branding. I've been testing this grinder for the last 10 days and in daily use, uh, it has been a pretty straightforward experience. If you're familiar with uh, coffee grinders, then this one here is pretty simple. You load your beans in here to the funnel and then you press the on off button. And there's only one button, there's no variable speed or programmability. So uh, in that sense, it couldn't be easier. As for the build quality, again, I have no complaints. It feels like uh, quality all the way through, even though the grinder is uh, quite small. When you have it in your hand, it actually there's good heft to it. It feels like a sturdy build. I think it uh, weighs in uh, just over five uh, kilos. So uh, that should tell you something about the construction. The motor also seems uh, plenty powerful. It actually runs at a really low RPM, uh, so it has a good torque. And uh, in daily use, it's been uh, going through a lot of espresso, back-to-back uh, -back shots, and it's had no problems so far. In the beginning, I mentioned another grinder that is similar to this one, the Laga Mini, and uh, that grinder has had some uh, issues with uh, grinding for espresso repeatedly. 
so the motor would just uh, burn out. But uh, I don't think this is something you have to be worried about with the FEMA book. Now, when it comes to the disassembly, that's where things are getting really interesting. So the way the grinder is uh, constructed is just by using a lot of magnets and a really clever design. So you can actually take it apart in just a matter of minutes uh, without using any tools at all. So your daily upkeep, your daily cleaning is uh, as simple as it would be with a manual grinder. So let me just show you really quickly how easy it is. So first you take off the funnel like this and then you take off the catch bin and then this little funnel here as well. Then there's a cover, just removes like this. And then there's another cover here. And now we're into the grinds chamber. And then you just lift up this rod here. And now you actually have access to the grinds chamber. And uh, the grinder comes with a brush and uh, air blower. So uh, yeah, then you can just take it out and uh, get most of the stuff out without a deeper cleaning. You can also remove this uh, top adjustment dial here and uh, also get in and release the burr. And um, yeah, so it's pretty easy to uh, go in and um, do some uh, calibration uh, if you need to. But uh, I'm just gonna leave it as it is right now because uh, I already calibrated it to zero and I, I don't want to mess about with it now when I'm shooting this video. So to reassemble, you just do the exact opposite. So let me just... Oh, I should mention it's pretty cool when you have the cover up here, then you can see the bean funnel. So it actually slides in here, the beans, and uh, then they uh, get down into the grinds chamber. So this is a really uh, simple and uh, beautiful solution. And then there's a little knob here, which is kind of the security. So uh, you can only um, run the grinder when uh, this cover is in place. Of course, you can uh, just press it in and uh, then uh, you can get around that security thing if you want to see it up close. Maybe I should just show you how it works so uh, we can see that torque of the grinder. So now I'm just pressing the safety lock. So as you can tell, uh, the torque is uh, really slow. It's almost uh, similar to a manual grinder. The reason this grinder is still faster is because the burrs are bigger than uh, the typical hand grinder. So these are 68 millimeters as opposed to uh, something like the K-Max, which is uh, 48 millimeters. That grinder is already quite fast for a hand grinder, but this one here is still just a little bit faster. And then we're just gonna pop this one in here. As for the adjustability, it's again super simple. If you're familiar with the Easy Presso series of grinders, the K-Max, the J-Max, K+, it's the same thing here. Uh, you have the adjustment dial and you have a pretty good range for both Espresso, AeroPress, Drip, French Press, you name it. And uh, this uh, adjustment here, it moves the burst with the 8.8 .8 microns, which is the same as the J-Max. So uh, you have plenty of range to really dial in your shot. So uh, basically it's like having a stepless grinder. It's just better because you can always find back to your old setting. So uh, I am pretty sure you're not gonna miss any uh, settings at all if you want to really dial your shot in perfectly. When it comes to retention, again, this grinder really shines. It's basically like a manual grinder, which means it's a zero retention. So if you put in 15 grams, you'll have 15 grams out most of the time. Maybe once in a while, there'll be a little variation, something like 0.1 grams. But uh, in the big picture, yeah, this is uh, zero retention. I guess it's pretty obvious when you uh, see the design, since there's no shoot for the grounds to get stuck in, uh, you don't really have that buildup of uh, grounds that can uh, get clocked. So uh, even at an espresso setting, the grounds come out uh, pretty easily. 
So I think this design is uh, really superior when it comes to retention. Another great thing about the, this design is the fluffiness of the grounds. So again, it's similar to something like the Barazza Sete, which is another grinder that uh, doesn't have a chute where the grounds just fall out uh, straight uh, down from the grind path. And uh, that's really a superior design when it comes to uh, fluffiness as well. So I've never quite seen uh, anything like this grinder here. When you look into the catch cup, the grounds, even at the espresso setting, are just completely clump free and uh, ready to be added to your uh, portafilter and uh, distributed. So uh, yeah, a lot of points for the fluffiness and the lack of retention with this grinder. For the sound and the speed, I would say this grinder is only middle of the pack. Uh, it's not really a fast grinder, as I mentioned, it's uh, similar to uh, manual grinders. And for the sound, well, let's uh, do a little test run and then you can judge for yourself. Of course, we're also going to talk about the taste. I would say that uh, this is a bit more of an espresso focused grinder. I feel like this is where it uh, really shines. The shots I've had have been uh, full bodied, but still with a nice clarity and um, no kind of astringency, which you can sometimes get with uh, conical burrs. I've been comparing it to the Easypresso K-Max for a couple of days and I find that uh, this consistently produces uh, better shots. As for pour over coffee, well, uh, let's do a little test and uh, then we can compare the two grinders. So I'm just going to do a very simple recipe, a center pour for the bloom and then I'm going to use the Gabby Drip Master for the rest of the brew. So uh, that's not really a lot up to uh, manual errors. The result here is pretty similar to what I've been experiencing over the last few days, that the K-Max is uh, slightly more enjoyable as a filter coffee. Uh, it has a little bit more uh, nuance. Uh, it's a um, fuller uh, picture, so to speak, but the, the profile is uh, very similar. I think if you look at the burr set of the A68, it uh, looks a lot like the K-Max or Q2 uh, burr sets. Of course, it's a lot bigger and it's octagonal, but overall, uh, you can definitely see the similarity. If you look at the other 68 millimeter burrs on the market uh, from uh, Carpatec and uh, Compaq, for instance, they uh, do have a quite different geometry. The same goes for the Masaconi and the Mesa Rober, uh, they have a bit more of that uh, aggressive espresso geometry, whereas uh, the burrs in uh, this grinder uh, are a lot more similar to the Easypresso burrs, which, if you ask me, is a good thing because it's an enjoyable cup, uh, both when it comes to uh, drip coffee and espresso. Here you can see it next to the 38mm Easypresso Q2, and it kind of looks uh, like the, that one and the K-Max burr, even though it's uh, octagonal. By now I've said a lot of uh, really positive things about the Fimmer book, but we also have to talk about uh, some of the downsides, and uh, there are a couple. So one thing I haven't showed you yet is the power supply that the grinder comes with. So let me just unplug it for you and then show you what we're talking about. So basically you have this uh, big bad boy here. I guess it's easy to understand why the grinder can be so compact yet powerful when you understand that uh, all the power comes from the, this supply here. So this is kind of huge and it's not really something that uh, you'd want on your kitchen counter. At least I don't. If you're lucky, you have a coffee bar where you can hide away stuff like this and uh, then it's not a big deal. But if you're using the grinder in the kitchen under a cabinet, then uh, I'm not really sure what you're going to do about the, this one here. Another big question with this grinder is of course the price. 
So at this point in time, uh, the grinder hasn't officially been released. It's not going to be until uh, November. And uh, I'm not even sure what the exact price is going to be. But uh, what the company has told me is that it's going to be similar to other pretty high level uh, domestic grinders. So something like the Niche Zero, DF64, maybe even DF83. So it's going to compete in uh, that price range. And I think with the higher price also comes higher expectations. So for instance, I'm not sure I would recommend this over a really nice uh, grinder with uh, flat burrs. Personally, I usually prefer flat burrs, even though it can be nice with a conical grinder now and then. So uh, yeah, if I only had money for one grinder, I would probably go for one of those instead. I guess whether this is a good deal or not uh, also depends on the perspective. You could either see it as a more expensive, like a mini, or you could see it as a very affordable uh, Weber key grinder. So to wrap it up, I would say that uh, overall, there's a lot of good things to say about the grinder. It's unique, it has magnets everywhere, it's easy to disassemble, the grinds are fluffy, and uh, it's easy to go back and forth between uh, espresso and drip coffee. And uh, overall, uh, I'm getting enjoyable cups out of it. And uh, yeah, it also looks pretty good uh, on the kitchen counter. But then there's also the downsides. You have the weird name, the slightly uh, weird branding, and you have a huge uh, power supply that you have to hide somewhere. So the big question I think is, uh, what's the price going to be? For instance, if you can get a K-Max and a Eureka Mignon Specialita for the same price, I think it's going to be more difficult to recommend the A68. On the other hand, if it's more in the same price range as the Lager Mini and the Barazza Sete, yeah, then of course it gets a lot easier to recommend. But would I recommend this over really good flatbird grinders, even with a nice workflow? I'm not entirely sure. So what do you guys think? Is this going to be a big hit? Or would you rather have a more traditional electric burr grinder at home? Let me know down in the comment section. Oh, by the way, if you're looking for a really solid grinder for filter coffee, then I have a big roundup. I'll put a link right here so you can just click it and then I'll see you over in that video.